You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice forever unharmed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch and Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, my brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize him, and by condemning him, they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. Even though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I myself will have... Excuse me, I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, ye rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice before him with trembling. Rejoice. You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Gospel of the Lord. Our uh, gospel is taken from uh, Jesus' last speech, uh, which um, he gave at the Last Supper. In the Gospel of John, there are approximately three chapters dedicated to the things that Jesus said at the Last Supper. So he was getting his followers, meaning his apostles, ready for his impending death, and they were very upset. And uh, they didn't know how to deal with it, uh, because in the Jewish religion there, at the time, there, there was no clear understanding of any sort of life after death. I mean, they had a little bit of an inkling of it, but nothing had been revealed. And if you look into the Old Testament, you don't have much there concerning what happens after death. The, the, the big thing with the Jews was uh, being blessed in this life with prosperity, longevity, and offspring. That was the big thing. So the, with death, they didn't, they didn't know exactly how to handle it. And, 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 and as you, if you read some of the later readings in the Old Testament, like Ecclesiastes and things of this type, uh, it, it, they're kind of pessimistic about, you know, what does this all mean? Everything's vanity. You know, uh, what, what is life? Life passes. Um, how can we make sense of it, and so forth and so on. So Jesus is, is going to die. So his disciples are very upset. And Jesus then says something that no one else had ever said before. He, he said, um, my father's house, there are many dwelling places. So, and then he went on to say that where I am, or, or where I'm going, I will come back, you, come back and take you to myself. So he's talking really about heaven. And um, he calls it his father's house. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. So, in other words, the father has room for, for many. And um, then he goes on to say the important thing is to have faith in God and then faith to believe in Jesus. And that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, he's not um, one, one of the ways to heaven. He's the only way. I remember uh, not too long ago, a Catholic bishop was on a television uh, show or, or something perhaps on YouTube, but the host of the show was, was not a Christian at all and, and was asking about, you know, d does he, meaning the host, have any chance of getting to heaven? And, and the bishop didn't do a good job because he said, well, you know, belief in Jesus is, is good and it's important, but it, Jesus is a privileged way. He's not the only way. I mean, I, I'm paraphrasing him a little bit. But really, it isn't true. The, the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus. Now, sometimes people don't know Jesus, not through their own fault. I mean, but they're, they're good people. Still, they need Jesus. They, uh, Jesus died for the sins of mankind. So, you know, he's not an option. So the, the moral of the story is we really have to understand who we are as Christians and what we have, what we're called to be. And again, you know, in, in the Father's house, there are many mansions. I mean, we are called to, to ultimately become citizens of, of heaven. Uh, but we have to live this life as loyal, faithful disciples of, of Jesus. And um, not let the, the weight of our mortality crush us. I mean, everybody's going to leave this world. And I, I, I'm not trying to make light of that. That isn't the point. But we, we have to be mindful of what we're called to be ultimately. You know, many people are very concerned about all kinds of things in the world, uh, 
their financial welfare and their children, and all these things are good and important. But we also have to cons consider uh, our eternal welfare and, and the eternal welfare of many other people. So that's why we pray for the souls of the, of the departed. We have masses for people and so forth. We want people you know, to get into heaven. Now, sometimes people have to be purified after death, uh, which, is, which is a grace. You know, I, I, I can't imagine uh, how people get into heaven if, if they had all kinds of rough edges on their personalities or, or whatever, unfinished, unfinished business in the way of perfection. And uh, we can't fall into the trap to think that uh, heaven is automatic. It, it, it really isn't. And I don't say this because I'm trying to, to scare people, but I, Jesus himself warned people you know, that they, they really have to live for God and listen to him and not take things for granted. The worst thing that could happen is for somebody to die and not to get into heaven. That means hell. Hell is, a, is very bad. We don't want that at all. Now, the thing is, it's not God sending people there. He doesn't send anybody there. People can do it to themselves. It just means... You know, life without God, carried to its extreme, is, is hellishness. And even in this world, there, you know, hell, hell will, will make itself felt when we have enough people who don't believe in God. We have what we have today. You know, abortion is horrendous and other terrible crimes and whatnot. You know, too many people don't believe in God. They don't understand Jesus or they don't care or they sin against him. So the only thing that can really separate us from God is, you know, if, if we commit a serious sin and don't repent of it then, then, and die in that state. So the Lord does not want that of us. I mean, that's why Jesus died on the cross. He wants to save as many people as possible. Now, when Pope John Paul II gave his famous interview, it's in the book um, form. It's called uh, Crossing the Threshold of Hope. The interviewer said, well, Holy Father, are, are you saved? And he didn't say, well, I'm the Pope, I'm going to heaven. That would have been quite arrogant. He said, I hope to be. And, and the virtue of hope means I trust in God, I trust in his love and his grace and his power. I don't really trust in myself. But thanks be to God for the gift that he's offering all of us, for the gift of Jesus as our Savior, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Love, brothers and sisters, we turn to our Father who hears our prayers. Please use the response, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church everywhere, for all of her leaders, for um, those who teach the faith and spread the faith, for missionaries, for parents raising children in the faith, uh, for a new spirit of evangelization um, and that we may not uh, merely keep the faith but help to spread it and live it accordingly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have a responsibility uh, as leaders in uh, various levels of government that uh, in fact that they are uh, mindful of uh, the dignity of human life at all stages and make wise decisions, especially regarding the, uh, the needs that are, that are incumbent upon us in this health crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, uh, for the dying. Uh, we pray for the conversion of sinners everywhere, uh, for people who sow falsehood, or discord, uh, for the confused, they will be, receive uh, clarity, of mind and so forth. Uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, and um, for the, the souls of our beloved departed, especially for Catherine Barak, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Father, thank you for allowing for the masses, the many masses to take place. Uh, we're grateful for uh, the service rendered by uh, almost 400,000 priests throughout the world and, and the tens of thousands of masses that are taking place and 
the great spiritual impact that these things have, even though you know they're not allowed, uh, most of them, to have public con or congregations on site. Um, please, uh, during this time, help uh, help us to to grow in our desire for for you, Lord, uh, and um, open our hearts more and more to prayer, and um, uh, not be uh, discouraged or, or put off by the present difficulties. We pray these things through your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, our good, and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray the offerings of your family that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. This is an act of spiritual communion, a prayer for desiring the Blessed Sacrament when it becomes available. But in the meantime, we're asking for the Lord to come into our hearts spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Father, we trustingly pray to you, asking that the coronavirus may do no more harm, that the pandemic may be swiftly gotten under control, that you restore the health of those affected, and peace to the places where the virus has arrived. Welcome into your kingdom the people who have died from this illness, and comfort their families. Sustain and protect the healthcare personnel who are fighting it, and inspire and bless those working to control it. 
Lord Jesus, doctor of our bodies and souls, we feel impotent in the face of this international health emergency, but we trust in you. Give us peace and health. Mother Mary, protect us and continue to take care of us. Lead us through your love, through your son Jesus. Amen.